my name is Camille and I'm a reference librarian here at the Oak Brook Public Library. Welcome to the April edition of In Case You Missed It, where I review a few nonfiction titles that we've recently moved from our new books bookshelves into our regular collection. Again, my only criterion for choosing any of these titles is that I would want to read them myself. So let's get started. First, we have the book Faster. How a Jewish Driver, an American Heiress, and a Legendary Car Beat Hitler's Best by Neil Bascom. And a short blurb from the publisher here. They were the unlikeliest of heroes. Rene Dreyfus, a former top driver on the international race car circuit. Charles Wiffenbach, head of the down and out, down, excuse me, down on its luck automaker Delahaye. And Lucy Schell, Lucy Schell, the adventurous daughter of an American multimillionaire. As Nazi Germany launched its campaign of racial terror and pushed the world towards war, these three misfits banded together to challenge, challenge Hitler's dominance at the apex of motorsport, the Grand Prix. Their quest for redemption culminated in a remarkable race that is still talked about in racing circles to this day, but which, soon after it ended, Hitler attempted to completely erase from history. Bringing to life this glamorous era and the sport that defined it, Faster chronicles one of the most inspiring, death-defying upsets of all time, a symbolic blow against the Nazis during history's darkest hour. Next, I chose This Brilliant Darkness, a book of strangers by Jeff Charlotte. Lives lived in shadows and corners are lit up in this offbeat photojournalistic essay. Journalist and Dartmouth writing professor Jeff Charlotte roams several continents snapping smartphone photos he posts on Instagram and talking to people like night shift workers at a Dunkin Donuts in Vermont, a far right gun fanatic in Sch Schenectady, New York, a Ugandan clergyman who's terrified of a witch's curse, brothers, sister, just street junkies in Dublin, Ireland. Most of the pieces are short evanescent essays, but Charlotte includes longer pieces, including a profile of a homeless African immigrant on LA's Skid Row who was shot to death unarmed by police, and also a sketch of a mentally fragile New England woman struggling to control her life, her only friend a potted plant named Bandit. Charlotte's haunting photos accompany clipped, pointillist, but expressive prose that evokes character and tragedy. The result is a triumph of visual and written storytelling, both evocative and moving. Next, I chose Looking for Miss America, a Pageant's 100-Year Quest to Define Womanhood by Margot Mifflin. <clears throat> Looking for Miss America is a fast-paced narrative, narrative history of a curious and contradictory institution. From its start in 1921 as an Atlantic City tourist draw to its cur current incarnation as a scholarship competition, the pageant has indexed women's status during periods of social change, the post-suffrage 1920s, the Eisenhower 1950s, and the current Me Too era. This ever-changing institution has been shaped by war, evangelism, the rise of television and reality TV, and significantly by contestants who confounded expectations. Margot Mifflin shows how women made hard bargains even as they used the pageant for economic advancement. The pageant's history includes, crucially, those it excluded. The notorious Rule 7, which required contestants to be of the white race, which was retired in the 1950s. However, no women of color were crowned until the 1980s. Looking for Miss America examines the heady blend of capitalism, patriotism, class anxiety, and cultural mythology that has fueled this American ritual. Next, I chose the address book. What Street Addresses Reveal About Identity, Race, Wealth, and Power by Deirdre Mask. <clears throat> when most people think about street addresses, if they think of them at all, it is in their capacity to ensure that the postman can deliver mail or a traveler won't get lost. But street addresses were not invented to help you find your way. They were created to find you. In many parts of the world, your address can reveal your race and class. In this wide-ranging and remarkable book, Deirdre Mask looks at the fate of street, streets named after Martin Luther King Jr., the wayfinding means of ancient Romans, and how Nazis haunt the streets of modern Germany. The flip side of having an address is not having one, and we also see what that means for millions of people today, including those who live in the slums 
of Kolkata and on the streets of London. Filled with fascinating people and histories, the address book illuminates the complex and sometimes hidden stories behind street names and their power to name, to hide, to decide who counts and who doesn't and why. And finally, I chose the book Girl's Garage. How to Use Any Tool, Tackle Any Project, and Build the World You Want to See by Emily Pilaton. <clears throat> Girl's Garage is the only book you'll ever need for a lifetime of tools and building. Not sure which screws to buy? Need to fix a running toilet? With Girl's Garage, you'll have the expertise to tackle these problems with your own hands. Or maybe you want to get creative and build something totally new. A birdhouse? A bookshelf? Girl's Garage has you covered. Packed with illustrations that will build confidence for your next hardware store run, practical advice on everything from quick fixes to safety tips, and inspiring stories from real world builders, girls and women, this comprehensive guide by the founder of Girls Garage makes the technical accessible. Girls, grab your tools and get building. You can find all of these titles and more on our display, the, the in case you missed a display in our library. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Please check back for new programming each month. And don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for joining me and see you next time.